So first I'll just briefly introduce the E8 medium. Uh, so I think the easiest way to do this is just by list of components. So shown here you can see the, the uh, published components from the Thompson lab paper that led to M teaser 1. Uh, and E8 is really just a bare bones version of this formulation. So a number of the components are missing and probably chief among them is the bovine serum albumin. And uh, on the right here is the key experiments that led to the development of this media. So if you, can, uh, if you look at first um, on the left, we have a control containing bovine serum albumin and beta mercaptoethanol. And on the, the y-axis here is the 24-hour survival index of cells, and so it's a short-term assay. But what the Thompson lab showed was that if you took out uh, the BSA alone, you'd get a, a significant decrease in survival of your cells. But if you remove both the BSA and the beta mercaptoethanol, you could recover that survivability for the cells. Um, and, and have both components absent from the media. The last one on bar on the right shows that if you take out BME alone, the cells can still survive well. Um, so, so via this pairwise uh, removal of components, the, they were able to strip down the media to um, a basic set of components. But what I think is the most striking feature of this new media is that the total protein content is dramatically lower um, so as you can see here, E8 has a protein concentration of about 0 0.03 grams per liter, while MTZER has, uh, as published, is 13 grams per liter. So this is over 400 times less protein, which is going to lead to a dramatic difference in the environment that the cells are exposed to. So I think, uh, based on this, the obvious question is, why is albumin added to the culture medium in the first place? Uh, so there's a lot of known functions for albumin and culture medium, and some of them have been discussed already at this meeting. Um, it's known to be a nutrient carrier. It can stabilize uh, proteins, both excreted from cells and also those that are added to the media um, in, in, the, in the culture medium. Uh, radical oxygenated species are something that uh, people are increasingly trying to avoid, and albumin can act as a radical scavenger. Uh, it's known to affect viscosity for transport uh, issues of, of molecules around the culture media and can also help buffer from media toxins as evidenced by the, the uh, beta mercaptoethanol, which is presumably the, the BSA is soaking up the, the beta mercaptoethanol and preventing it from damaging the cells. So what that does to the culture medium uh, is improve the tolerance to stress and also increase robustness. So it, it, it's sort of a buffer in the system so you can have better tolerability. So then the next question would be, why would we want to remove the albumin? And I think there's a lot of applications and probably more to be discovered where low protein medium is ideal for working in cell with cells where it's a simple environment, you have minimal background to isolate the interactions that you're interested in. And the Thompson lab has also showed that high reprogramming efficiencies can be achieved in this low protein media. So, so these are nice benefits, but um, the, thing, the point that we're starting to realize is that there may be some trade-off between the medium simplicity and the uh, robustness or ease of use of that media and the tolerance to errors in protocol or that kind of thing. Um, so that, that's kind of uh, one of the themes of the talk here as we move through. <coughs> 